Rodney Raw. Welcome to the Dozcast, the first guest. How are you? I'm not bad to bad. How are you? I'm all right. Well, I'm aching a little bit from yesterday, but I'm good. Yeah, you, 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 you get, you're getting older now. Oh, you know, 17. Oh, you're trying to give me jokes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get through it, lad. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be all right. Um, I just wanted to start with, uh, obviously, we've just, me and you have both taken um, the kids from our school. I don't know if we can name the school, but I'm going to go with it. Um, Rainwood Junior School, we took them to athletics competition on Friday. Yeah, we did. Um, uh, I, I wanted to mention it because I wanted to mention um, the Pennine Sports Partnership and the good work that they do. Yeah. Um, amazing, amazing people. Amazing. People. Our kids managing to qualify along with... Fixed Bear, Linlet, and who's the other one? Mullins. Mullins. Um, but like all the kids that were there, man, I was looking at it thinking, like, this is brilliant. Like, giving opportunities to kids like that, do you know what I mean? Like, how, do you think how important is that? Do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, we've, I mean, I think we all know that we've never got that far mm -hmm. in all the years that, that we've worked at the, at the school. But just the, just a proud moment, really, to have 18 kids yeah. give everything and to look around you and see so much talent from different schools and to the, to the staff who have actually coached these children on or, you know, helped them, you know, compete in these sort of tournaments. Yeah. You can, I, think, I think you can only take your hat off to them and everything because they do an unbelievable job just seeing um, effort and courage and determination and um, yeah. even even those that who, who had won uh, uh, you know to the ones who came in last they never gave in yeah and that was more that was like a beautiful sight to see do you know what i mean you know not not children to say oh well i'm, I'm not gonna do it and just quit you know what i mean they, they, they just gave it everything they left they left everything you know yeah at that event. And, and, and like i say again what we've achieved well say what our pupils have achieved at Rainwood Junior School. Honestly, well, as you can tell, it brought a tear to my eye anyway. Yeah. So I'm extremely proud, really. Yeah. Proud um, the highlight for me, this sounds funny when I say it, so let me land, but the highlight was, I think we was watching the hurdles. It might have been hurdles or the obstacle race, but I seen a kid fall over one of the hurdles, but then just get up. And I thought, yeah. I wish I could have videoed that because he just got up, didn't even look sideways, just got up, finished the race. So along with all those traits that you just mentioned, like the resilience of some of them kids as well. Yeah. Like yes. every, every man. And I thought, you know what, that's what that's what I'm here for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She was she, she was a child from Fix Bay. Yeah. Um during the school. And I made it the point to actually con you know, congratulate her and say, you know, well done for not giving in and just getting on with it. Because that would have been difficult for a lot of people um to, to you know to deal with. But the manner how she um, got up and composed herself and still completed the task yeah. was was really. truly remarkable, yeah. truly remarkable. And, 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 she, and she was a, you know, she, she, and hopefully that that'll, in life that'll take a fine life. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. you know, it was beautiful. But that Definitely. was the point. That was. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is it that? Because obviously you've, you've had your football career, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, what is it that? drew you to working with children because obviously you've worked you've working with people for a unit haven't you yeah and, um, and then obviously mainstream as well what is it that um, you obviously enjoy working with kids what is it that keeps you going there um, trying to put a positive impact in their early lives really um, I got involved to be honest um, whilst I was at home and I we'd done an opening for a centre or some, somewhere and I, I didn't know exactly the whole um, background of it. And I just saw these individuals and all that. And I just thought it's a bit weird why they were in school, you know, whatever. And obviously I found out that I was saying there were a lot of, these were children that were been excluded and it was a, 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 a non-profit organization that, you know, would, you know, would, would, that were working with these kids yeah. that, that fell out, you know, for whatever, you know, um, mm -hmm. not attendance, violence you know just just not engaging them in whatsoever in um in the education system mm -hmm. and i thought and that's what really hit me and i thought 
I need to kind of, you know, when, when I finished playing football, I needed to work with children, you know, you know, who, who have difficulties uh, within the education system, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, and hopefully put a, a better impact, you know, on them, you know, yeah. rather than just the, the, the usual, just being ignored. That's a bad person. So there's no point trying, you know. Yeah. I just thought it was a lot of nonsense. Um, so, 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 so I did that for over. I think I did it for over nine, 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 nine ten years, something like that. I think something like that. Well, wow. and then, and then obviously, um, I recognised during that time. They, I think there was one child that actually came to where I worked at. at not at, it was not a far part of the hall. Um, was yeah. So so there was a young child. I'm sure it was six year old, seven year old pupil that came into into the school, and I just thought this is just ridiculous. You know, you know, a child that young, you know, you know, being taken out of a mainstream um, school. Yeah, so. Cool. So then, I, so, so then, so then, then, luckily, um, I spoke with my partner, and I was just, just you know, I, you know, I, I didn't like what what was seeing. I got a bit, a little bit, you know, dragged down, and I just wanted a change. And then, luckily enough, um, the head teacher, Mrs. Eastwood, um, and gave me a call. Said, you know, would I fancy get involved? And I said, well, yeah, you know, definitely. So, like I say, you know, and I think like now. I think we've, I think, we, I think we've put in uh, myself, you know, you know, even you dozen, and and obviously the staff at the school have put in a lot of hard work mm -hmm. in reducing children from being um, um, taken out of mainstream, you yeah. know, to, to at least get into that next stage in in high school. And I think that's, I, I think that's all you can do, really. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, you're not always going to get it, but get it right, but you know. If you put those things in place for, for, for young people these days, you are gonna, they are gonna benefit from it, you know. I think I think you were spot on about the um, kids struggling with the education system because I know we spoke about this loads of times, but I, yeah. sometimes education is just not for you. So no. I've had kids that I've worked with, and I've just like I've noticed straight away like education is not for you, and they don't know the other options. Do you know what I mean? They don't know that oh, I don't have to, I don't have to do this. I can do an apprenticeship. And, and, and work alongside doing this or there is obviously you've got to try and help them navigate through school because you know it's got to be done but you know your kids that just are not interested they want to they want to make money and do you know what I mean they're just that way out from early they just they haven't got an interest so I guess it's about identifying those kids where the system it doesn't work for and just yeah. like giving them that guidance to navigate through it but um, I do remember Again, I, think, I remember I think, yeah, go on go on yeah, sorry, I think the education system as well needs a whole. You know, it needs looking at. Mm. You, know, I, you know, it it's 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 stuck in its old system yeah, where yeah. it just says, "Well, that won't work for for then, and we're never going to change it." And I think, like you say, it's like the content's the same. It's some of the children clearly don't, you know, just don't care about what they're actually being given to learn. You know, mm. there's more and more content out there that can actually grasp that what you know they're willing to actually learn you know and still get the same targets of what these people set out so you know i mean i can can only um respect the, the, you know any child going through this education system right now because like i said i i did enjoy going to school mm -hmm. i did enjoy learning and everything but again there were so many things that that we that we weren't taught yeah you know and why not? Yeah. Why? Why are these kids not getting the information? You know, you know, you know the the sort of uh, well, like I said, I know I know we don't buy all the time, Darren, and I just think it, I just think it's poor. And like, I think it's just dated. I think you spot. I think it's dated. Yeah. I think it's what it just needs a it needs a modernization. But I think the people at the head of it, they're they're dated as well. Like respectfully, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're not with the times now. I think I think you talk to a child now. If you speak to an eleven-year-old now, an eleven-year-old when I was at school, when you was at school, I think yeah. it's completely different. I think kids know a lot more now. Yeah. I think they're expected to be more mature now. I think. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, times have just changed. I don't, honestly, I just think it's just changed so much. Mm -hmm. But I agree, yeah. it needs changing. Yeah. Um, go on. 
No, 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 you're fine. Doesn't you're fine. I was, uh, just whilst we're on the education system, obviously we, we went through the whole um, George Floyd and the the Black Lives Matter stuff. Yes. Well, again, what we've also spoke about. Um, I guess this question is kind of, I want it to cover in football and in society as well. Yeah, yeah. How do you do you think we've come anywhere since the the, yeah. the big George Floyd thing and that's the massive push, the most recent yeah. massive push we've had. Do you think there's been any progress made since then or do you think there's yeah. still work to be done? Is there still yeah. things that need to change? But, but again, like I said, that, but that's where it's, again, that's where it starts from from, from early intervention. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, actually in the schools, that's where it starts from. But again, people say, oh, well, it has changed. Well, it, it, it you know, it hasn't, it's still that same, or again, mm -hmm. tied old system where those can, you know, you know, keep you not 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 able to rise, yeah. you know, not being able to walk freely, not being, you know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. just just simple rights, just 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 be taken just by the powers that be. Yeah. No, so mm -hmm. I can quite clearly say this 100% and, and this is no disrespect to my school, you know, you know which, which I went to, uh, Rutherford High School, mm -hmm. you know, great teachers, love all my mates there and all that kind of stuff. We actually covered black history in my whole five years of what I what learned about black history, two hours. Wow. That was the only input of black history that was given to me in my whole education life, yeah. two hours, and it was about slavery. Yeah, yeah. that was it. And, and actually, it was. I mean, I, I wasn't great in history, but I was kind of like just, just got to get it done. Yeah, but I remember just thinking, "Oh my gosh, I'm actually, I'm engaged in something. I want to learn more about it." Yeah, and it literally, you no know, sooner that it, I was hooked in. The sooner it was taken away, and yeah. that was the end of it. That was the end of that lesson. And I think to myself, how are we? We keep saying about um, early intervention, educating people, you know, about the impact of people of color and all that mess of it. But no one's willing to actually stand up and say, "Well, let's get it in the schools." Yeah, and I, and I don't, I, and you know, we don't. I don't mean like. Well, it's Black History Month, so let's do something like that. It's every single day. Yeah. Well, this is the society we live in. <laughs> That's the society we live in, so it should be every day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. An interesting point I had, I spoke to a teacher. I won't say who it was, um, but I have spoke to a teacher recently from a different school. Mm. Um, she raised a good point saying that teachers or some teachers feel uncomfortable teaching just in case they get it wrong i think that's a massive factor i think i think teachers need teaching on how to how to deliver certain things because i do think if you're not confident in delivering something and you're scared of saying the wrong thing which i do think that barrier has been taken down a little bit i think people speak a little bit more freely about it now which is good um which is why i like the the taking the knee and stuff i still think it's important because mm. it's gonna it's gonna start a conversation so you know what i mean you've got a child who watches I don't know, Ronaldo taking the knee. Dad, yeah. mum, why is, why is Ronaldo on his knee? Oh, it's because, you know, we're trying to mm. we're trying to promote equality. And do you know what I mean? So I do like all that. I think that barrier mm. is coming down a little bit and people are willing to speak. But if we're saying we need to have this in schools, there needs to be some sort of course or something that's going to empower the, t the people delivering it to deliver yeah. it well. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's just a, it's a token gesture, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, I mean, I, I, you know, we, we all know for a fact that there's certain fans that boo the players that, that, that take a knee, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you, you, you ask yourself this question, um, Darren. We celebrate um, or we, we um, remember um, for those who died in the war. Yeah. You know, and yet no one seems to raise that point that that's this is what they're doing, that people have died. Mm -hmm. all, these, all these players are doing it are respecting people of colour. Yeah. And yet, the same people yeah. that can boo you, that can boo you, but then it's, for one thing, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's dictating that. You know what I mean? And that's where the message isn't okay. You yeah. know what I mean? The message isn't okay. 
you know. And like I said, I, me personally, like I said, I don't feel that any, you know, for any teacher out there, the whole point is that sometimes we do get things wrong. That is the whole point of education. Definitely. You know, I mean, you're never, ever going to get it right. You're never going to get it right all the time. Mm -hmm. But you have to, but you have to um, if you don't do it on a consistent basis, day in, day out, how are you, how are you going to learn? Yeah, how can you, you, how can you become you, part of the problem? You become the problem. You're still, you're still in that avoidance mm -hmm. of something that needs discussing. It yeah. needs those conversations. It needs to see those impacts. You know, not just, I mean, a lot of people do say, you know, when I say people, when I say people of colour, I'm talking of all races. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you, know, you know, let's learn about different cultures. You know, you know let's celebrate pe other people's cultures by putting yeah. it in the school. Yeah. You know, to hopefully, hopefully that um, children that do come into the school feel like they are coming into school. Mm -hmm. um, we, I mean, we, we all agree that we all recognise when it's Christmas because the trees come up and, you know, children are doing cars and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. You can see quite, you know, as, you know, you know, as, as with all places. But yet, there are so many different um, should, um, celebrations yeah. throughout the way, throughout the year and yeah. they should be there, you know. Yeah. They should, you know, even, you know, even if, you know, just to walk in and just, you know, again, and that is more of an impact to every child and say, well, hang on a minute, we're all equal. We know we talk about it, but we are not, you know what I mean? And, and that equality for me isn't being shown. Yeah. That, that sort of equality isn't being shown and it needs to be shown. Yeah. You know, you know, rather than just words, actions also need to be, to be shown. You know, you know, and, and, and again, like I said, you know, and, and, and as, you know, for me, you know, with racism and AF, you know, in, in, in its forms and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's just, it just you've got to be held accountable for your actions. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and the punishment should be as severe as it can be because it is, it is difficult. Yeah. Um, when you're on the receiving end of it, it's not a nice feeling, but, you know, something's going to change quickly because it, it, can't, it can't carry on. It yeah. can't carry on the way we are. No. No, I agree. Very well said, by the way. Um, I, I, I'll just end a bit on working with children. Um, obviously, I noticed you're into a little bit of charity work and things. I mean, I know you've like you've done things like securing kit and things for our school, um, which I know is massively appreciated. Um, but I remember seeing the um, Life for a Kid thing where you sold one of your match yeah. shirts um, for yeah. a boy to... Uh, was it to buy a bike? Was it a trike or something? Yeah, I think it's a certain bike to help the child to um, mm -hmm. as part of his growth and um, which costs how much? I don't know if it costs a few hundred or I, I can't remember how much anything. But I had a conversation with his um, mother, yeah. and we did. We, 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 the plan was to arrange to, to to see the child, but obviously COVID came along. Mm -hmm. um, as as well as and obviously that didn't happen, but um, I'm hoping at some point to um, get over over to Hull and um, see the child and um, you know see his new bike of, of, of ourselves. Um, I mean, I, I think the next thing that we're doing, uh, me and my daughter, are going to do is um, the um, sleep for a night at the Mansfield Town ground, mm -hmm. you know, to, to recognise the homeless. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I think we're going to do that for um, one of my cousin's um, charities and um, to raise funds for his because he does a lot of work for children, people who are homeless. Um, so me and my daughter thought it'd be a good idea to give some back. Um, so we're hoping to raise quite a bit of money for that, um, okay. and hopefully that will um, that will um, again, like I said, have a, have a positive impact on um, you know the, you know these people's lives really. Um, I'm not quite sure how, um, I think I've seen, it kind of worries me and scares me, just seeing so many people, even in our, even in our town, in yeah. Huddersfield, you know, actually just, um, you know, you know, just not, just, you know, it's not a good thing for them. Um, I do, it does concern me when it's, when the temperatures drop. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. you know, with it being colder now, you know, I couldn't think if, if they were my own children, it's awesome. 
<clears throat> yeah, you know, you know, you know and, and and it's these sort of things, and um, again, for different reasons, people can, um, you know, I think totally understand whether it's mismanagement or um, mm-hmm. things that have gone, you know, wrong in the way. He could easily go wrong. I don't think people realise how easily that he, that you know what I mean. That could be you. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. I I always feel how I'll, I'll always take the time, um, and, I, and it's not to make me feel better about myself. It literally is the fact that I will always, get, you know, ask if I've eaten. Yeah, um, I think that's I think that's the important thing. You know, you know, it's, you know, it's just it's just by a few, you know, a bit of you know a sandwich or yeah and drinks you know and everything you know just knowing just knowing the fact that at least if that gives them a meal that they may not have had then i think that's something important and like again like i said there's nothing wrong in just trying to be just trying to be nice kind to another person out there that, 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 more that, more of it. yeah yeah and, and like i say and, and like i say i've always again it's just, it's just trying to give something back you know Something, something back to you know to, to the to the world that we live in. That's you know a nice thing to do. I feel like I feel like we started off very hard hitting. It, it does get more lighter. I promise. Yeah, um, no, yeah, and I, and and the thing is, I'm just sat here now. I'm just you know just thinking. You know, I'm thinking like <laughs> it is cold. It is cold tonight. Yeah, you know, it yeah. really is cold tonight. And even I'm like. You know, I'm just looking at you know of the, the areas of where these people are actually going to be. You know, yeah. and you know, even if you have got like you know spare blankets or spare clothes, like you know, you know, you're gonna throw, you know, you're gonna throw away, you know, you know, just think of of those people, yeah, um, you know, you know, who could who could maybe need it. So, yeah, wicked. Um, let's move towards football. I'm still not gonna let you brag about your professional career yet. Uh, I wanted to speak to you about football management. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you've got. Uh, I mean, I think it's district leagues crazy gang in Newsom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've obviously I've played, 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 played for you. I played for you. I played for you for Dram, and yeah. then uh, Britannia. Yeah. And now Newsom. Uh, so, do you know what I mean? Like, you obviously must be all right at man management because I'm quite difficult to manage. <laughs> I've been so I've been told. <laughs> I mean, I must admit. Um. I think you remember last season um, away to Linfield when I took you off. Oh yes, I do. Yeah, and, um, I, I, I mean, I, I know you do have your little um, angry um, <laughs> side, of you, um, but I think that time, I think that you, you'd, you'd, you'd have quite happily walked home and not waited to my car that day. <laughs> what a day! What a day to say, yeah, Rodney, I'll come to the game with you. What a day! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most awkward drive home. And, and, <laughs> For the listeners, we were getting absolutely <laughs> battered, and Rodney took me off. <laughs> yeah, I was fuming, absolutely fuming. Oh, uh, and and again, like I say, I mean, and, and you know what? I mean, you, you've got to make those sort of decisions at the yeah. time, and you you know you're not you're not there to be to be like to be honest. Yeah, um, you know, as when you're in the position as a manager or as a coach, you know, because players are always want to be happy. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is that that that's never going to be the case. Yeah, you know, the the, the important thing is that the team win. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I'm a believer that the fact is that I like the fact that to to actually be as entertaining as possible. Yeah, but also at the same time to be the to be to be the hardest working team, whoever yeah. it may be up against. And yeah. if those two if those two things you know go well. And you get the result, you know, fantastic. If it doesn't get that, you know, we don't get the result and we're losing all that, knowing the fact that everyone's given their all, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that is that, that is still a win. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you know, a lot of people cut a lot of corners. Um, <laughs> you know, even even at this level at Division don't 1. Don't mention names, don't mention oh, names. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I won't mention any names. I think, I think if, we, if we were to be honest, I think, I think throughout any leagues I think it's just a common thing um, yeah. you know in general but um, you know you know you have to put in you know it's not the case of just turn up on a Saturday play a game see you next Saturday you know you've got to put yourself in position you know 
as a as a group and actually say to them, so right, you know, where are we going to be? Do we yeah. want to win the leagues or do we want to be mid table or do we want to get relegated and play yeah. in the lowest form ever? Whereas it doesn't make, make a difference. We can just do whatever you please. And I think as a group, I think as a group of players, whoever they, you know, what, you know, whatever team it is and anything, I think if you are not all on the same goal, you can't, you can't get, you cannot achieve success. Yeah. 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 If everyone's got different things of whether, well, I'm going to go out on a, on a Friday, I'm not going to come training, um, I might be available on a Saturday, depending on what, how, you know, if it's cold, or you know how far you know is it away? How far is is, is, it, is it away? You know all these things. You know if that's people's if that's someone's mentality within your club, yeah. then they should find a team that is for them yeah. that will allow that. But so you, you kind of get what I mean. But, yeah. um, I mean, but again, I just um, I just think that in the day, like say, you know. Things can be done differently. I know. laugh sometimes. I laugh because obviously we we're playing Huddersfield District League now. Yeah. But I laugh when people will be like, "Oh yeah, we've got Diggle. It's miles away, man." And oh yeah, I only got I only got ten minutes or whatever. Bro, I've yeah. been taken to Mansfield on yeah. on a night game straight yeah. after work, seven forty five kick off, and not even touch the pitch. Yeah, to get home at midnight or whatever. So like, I'm I'm always laughing at. You know, a little trip to Diggle. Uh, that's that's yeah. nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I can't remember where, where. I mean, I was at Osset at the time, and um, uh, Manager came in, police officer, whatever. I mean, I think that just kind of summed him up in 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 our in our uh, honesty. And and I remember I was on the bench, and again it was cold, it was freezing, it was totally fine, no no problems, and everything, blah blah. blah. Just be, be, come up from injury and all that kind of stuff like no problems all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and I knew the game was, was obviously um, finishing and it was fine it was you know like I say it was Tuesday night does as we all know Tuesday night I'd be thinking right just get this get it over and done with not coming on it's totally fine Rodney get, get stripped and I'm thinking hang on a minute what do you mean get stripped <laughs> so I, I, I'm just free how long's left it was one minute yeah. he, goes, what? he said one minute I looked at him and I said and I said pardon I said pardon he said well, I, want, I want to go on the pitch I said, I said, I said, I will go on the pitch when the whistle blows for that final whistle, <laughs> and then I'll get changed and get changed. That's the only way I'm going onto that pitch. Absolutely, not in a million. And again, but these are the things that it does, you know, you know. And again, like I say, it's not, it's not a nice feeling. Like I say, I mean, God, I've been, you know, further than you know. Then, but it's, yeah. it is difficult. It is, it is hard. I mean, but like I say, because you know, it, some of these places that we go to, Dorothy, it's not even a journey. No. I mean, probably. I mean, probably. Obviously, you know, you know, over the next few years, obviously, we'd like to get the our club Newsham football club um, back in position, playing at a higher level than yeah. district. Yeah. Um, but again, like I say, it's about putting things in place mm-hmm. to allow us to get to that to that step again, yeah. and making sure with you know having the right squad and again, like I say, the right commitment, um, the right people, not, the right people. Um, we need more, you know, more volunteers. Um, more people, uh, you know, willing to help mm-hmm. grow the club, and um, you know, you know, continue with, with the um, uh, sponsorships. You know, the, you know, the businesses out there that actually sponsor the club. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, you know. Again, you know, you know, massive thanks to all of them that you know continue to um, support us in that way. Yeah. But again, moving forward, like I say, you know, we, we you know, again, like I say, again, we need to work. I'll find a way to work with these businesses, with the, you know, people within the community to come and support us more often. Because like I say, was it now 10, 10 games? We've won now. Wins. 10, 10, 10 wins. wins. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you know, trying to change that image of what has been in the past about the mm-hmm. club. Yeah. So, and again, I, think, and I don't think anyone who's been to see us this season um, could say that our football, but our hard work, has you know it hasn't been impressive. I mean, I think I think I've been really impressed with yeah. how we've um, we've gone out there and, and, and gone out with business, and also being respectful to the to the other, to the other um, the other teams that we are. You know, regardless mm-hmm. of, you know, if it's one nil or you know or whatever, we've always been humble and respect respectful yeah. towards towards the opposition, which is important. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
What's the biggest challenge in managing a football team? I've got them tough questions, boy. I've got them. Yeah. No, no, that's a good one. That that's a good one. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I think um, not having, you know, I'll just say for example, um, not having the right personnel in certain in certain um, areas of of how you'd like, and mm-hmm. then. <clears throat> Obviously, trying to encourage people to come and sign for the club. Um, when you know, in general, again for myself, for me to get round to every single, you know, team and mm-hmm. know these different types of players. Again, it just doesn't happen. So you hope, yeah. kind of, you kind of hope, you kind of hope word of mouth is like people would actually want to come and join the join, join the club. Yeah. Um, but then I suppose it, I suppose it's actually um, then working with with what you currently do have. And maybe having to mould a certain person to play in a position, to play in a different position, even yeah. though it might not be their position. But you, you know, you know, it's basically saying, well, you may be a centre half, but I need you to play midfield. It's for the team. Like I said, uh, just, for the team. Just, just for the team, just yeah. for the team. You know, and hopefully, and, and and hoping that you know a player does come along, and that takes away that sort of freedom. So. And also, you know, kind of really um, making sure that everyone gets a fair, fair, you know, a fair chance. You know, I think, I think if you give people opportunities and it doesn't work out, you know, I think, you know, both player and manager can say, well, you know, it hasn't worked out, but that's totally fine, but you're giving your all. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it for me. Um, but if you give an opportunity, it's what you do with it. Either you... Do we, you know, give it your best, mm-hmm. yeah, and continue to to improve, or you know, just not, just if it doesn't work out, and it's you know, again, no falling out, it's just simply right, you know, it, it's not a big deal, and but we we, we keep, but you just keep working to help improve um, those players. So yeah, it, it, it is difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. Um, let's move on to your playing career. Yeah. Do you want me to reel it off all the teams? <laughs> have you got your Have you got your golf bag there? Because you've had oh, a lot of clubs. Oh, oh. Are you ready? And I'm, 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 I'm Huddersfield. So, well, 12th of July, 1993, you signed your first professional contract with Huddersfield Town. <laughs> yeah, you went that to Scarborough on Scarborough on loan in '94, yeah. Bury on loan '95. Yeah, uh, York City was next 97 to 99 scored yeah. quite a few goals there yeah uh, Halifax Town on loan yeah I didn't know this one you signed for Gillingham 30 grand did, did, did you know that? I didn't know that 30,000 pound should be more to be fair uh, so that was between 99 to 01. Hull City, yeah. 01, 02. Yeah. Uh, then Wakefield and Emley. Yeah. Aston United, Osset Town, Farsley Celtic and Bradford Park Avenue. Have yeah. I missed anyone? No, 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 that's right. That's right. Um, my first question is, where did you have the best time? Which club? Oh, everybody asks me this question. It's so difficult. So so difficult. Um, I think first and foremost, and I always say it, without those field towns, you know, you know their impact on on my um, my you know going through the system. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, my career doesn't doesn't happen at all. Um, yeah. So Huddersfield will always be at the top, one hundred percent. George Mullall you know, may rest in peace, but honestly, what an unbelievable coach. Tough, but, you know, unbelievable coach. Yeah. Um, I would say my best time would have to be Hull. What's Hull. that just based on how you were playing? Was that just where you felt comfortable? No, I mean, to be honest, um, when I was at I was at I was at um, Gillingham and 
Um, Brian Little, obviously, the ex, you know, ex Premier League manager for Aston Villa. Legend. You know, you know, again, you know, you're thinking, well, I've just worked with a England on 21 coach, you know, Peter Taylor, you know, Gillingham just got a promotion. Mm -hmm. Back in the championships, I'm thinking, well, obviously, you know, for, I've been playing in the championship when I was at Huddersfield Town. So I thought, right, brilliant, can't wait and everything. And recognised I wasn't in the manager's plans for that season because um, Peter Taylor then left. Um, so, as you know, it was like, you know, I was like going back and forth. It was like, oh, this is getting boring. Didn't make a difference whatever I did. Just clearly I had no intention of playing maybe regardless. It was kind of like, so it was frustrating. Yeah. Um, but I but I do remember Brian Little literally, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly um, trying to get me to get over the hole. Mm -hmm. But I, I but I knew there was a lot of things going on about the owner trying to, lot of, you know, like a lot of back and forth in the press going on and players might not be, be, be getting paid, the club might be, you know, might be shut down, you know, and whatever. Mm -hmm. So obviously I had um, my, you know, my young children at the time. So security was a, was a massive thing. And I remember having a conversation with him and I said, look, you know, I'm just a little bit concerned about what's going on. He assured me, he said, it's fine. Don't worry about it. They've assured me. We've got no problems. Just come. We're, we're building big things here. Come, come with us. I said, right, that's, that was totally fine. So on just before I, I, just before New Year's Day, um, so I signed, and I said, for once it went through. Yeah. And, um, Came in training in, in the new year, and you know, so a lot, you know, met a lads and everything. You know, I doing boys and everything, blah blah blah. Um, went out training, really good session. You know, blasted out and everything. Came back in. Um, at the time, one of the players reps, you know, said, "Oh, lads, you need to stay in here." So quick, quick word, and then turns around and says, um, "Yeah, I don't think we're getting paid this month." <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that was literally on our first day. Oh god! So that, that, that was my first day at Hull, and mm. and literally so it went on and on and on and on, and then that said it went we, to administration, mm. um, and you know we weren't getting paid, and we were getting like I think we we're getting some like I think we were like even forty quid or something like that, something like that a week. Wow. It, it, it was somewhat daft, um, and you no know, players were had gone way into their overdraft. You know what, what league? What league are they in at this at this point? We was in we was in league. I think would have been league two. So that'd be like division three at the time. Could have been, yeah. Could 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 yeah. well have been. Could okay. well have, could, yeah. Could could well have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. could have been, yeah. And um, I just remember, you know, just I mean. One thing I will say is that the fans, again, you know, put in their own pockets, you know, literally, you know, giving their hard earned cash to, you know, towards us players. But it then got to the point where we could, players couldn't even put fuel in the, into the cars. I think, have I watched something where there was like fans outside with buckets and everything like that? Oh, on the ground and all sorts, yeah. Fans, fans were pelting. Oh, it was, you know, it, 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 it you know, it wasn't. It was it was a one time where we had this connection, the the players and the fans, because at the, at the point we weren't re, we weren't really um, in the mix. If you get what I mean, we, we yeah, weren't yeah. we weren't in um, playoff contention. We weren't challenging for the title. You know, we were just literally we, we were just hovering. Basically, yeah. we weren't we had no issues about being relegated, but we we weren't really doing anything. And I think, especially with the players, and I think that was important. Like I say. Every single player, just you know, we just had that bond where it just literally clicked. Yeah. Yes, we weren't getting paid. I ended up bringing the manager, asking the fact that we can't continue where we're training because lads can't get his training. Mm -hmm. We were literally, we were literally, it would be game on Saturday, game on Tuesday, game on Wednesday if you were in the sec in the reserves. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday. So we, we, we went on for, for ages. We had Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesdays. And all we would do is we would t turn up on a Friday, train, yeah, play on Saturday. We wouldn't go back to the club until I would meet for whatever it was on the Tuesday for the game. Wow. And that, is all, that, is all we, that is all we did. And, that, yeah, we went on We went on a ridiculous, I don't know if it was 
12, 13, 14 game run, unbeaten run. Just it was just ridiculous. It was and and it just worked because every single person knew the situation that we were in. Obviously, clubs, you know, you could you could sign for clubs if you know the you know whether the club had no fee. So yeah. you know you you know you had to guarantee to um to get that, you know to get you know to know that you're getting paid. Yeah. Um, but again, like I say, um, once the takeover the takeover happened with Adam Pearson, who was currently at Hull now at Hull FC. Mm-hmm. Rugby, again, once that happened, and obviously all your money got back there, and you know, so you got all your money back in that sense. Um, yeah. um, the manager turned around and said, "Right, lads, no excuses now. We're, we're back to normal." And I'm sure we ended up either losing or drawing. And I thought to myself, Gaffer, why did you change it? <laughs> I mean, why did you change it? it yeah. you know I mean, you know, it just worked for us, you know, and, and I know it sounds crazy, like I say, I mean, for me, it was nice the fact that I was able to spend more time with my, with my kids. Yeah. Um, even though, it, you know, that was not, you know, you know, playing football, you know, was my job. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I had more time to spend them. Um, yeah. You know, but again, like I say, yeah, I, I think I think just I think just for that alone, um, I had a you know brilliant time at York, you know, great um, working with um, say at Gillingham with Peter Taylor, um, um, learning new things, um, playing with I always thought was the best defense ever because they you know they've been they've been drilled by Tony Pulis and I heard some of them stories and you think gosh. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not defending them, but again, you <laughs> but you could understand why they. Why, I believe that they that they were the best um, yeah. at that time. So I was lucky enough to be able to go and play with that group of players. Um, you know, Carla Saba, my gosh, you know, you know, good friend, brilliant striker. You know, fantastic, mm-hmm. oh, you know, not very great at computer games because used to do my editing. <laughs> you know, battle all the time, you know, and, and all different types of games. But yeah. you know, it was just you know, you, you know, some fantastic memories. Um, and when you look back and all that, you, you know, you, and that's why I say, you know, you just got to cherish those, those, those. You know, the time that you are in that position in football. It's a short <laughs> career, isn't it? It's a short career. Oh, it's, it's the, you know, I, I wish somebody would have just given me a shake and just said, "Please don't play football." Just yeah. do something differently. Like. <laughs> it, it is painful. It's 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 yeah. it's 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 not the glamorous lifestyle that everyone thinks that what's we know yeah. what they out there on the TV. It's hard. I mean, I think this is it. I think I said this to you a few weeks ago about they need to maybe show because you get a lot of kids now who so saying I want to be a professional footballer because mm-hmm. they see they see the end of the journey. They see you on the pitch, they see how much they're and whatnot, but mm. they saw the journey there. They saw the hard work, the sacrifice. Yeah. I think there needs to be some sort of TV program made where it highlights all of that stuff as well, just to make them realise, you know what, it's not no God given. Like it's no. you know, it's a minute percentage that make it into a professional game. One percent. Not a joke, man. Yeah, yeah. One percent. Yeah, one percent. Yeah, one percent. Get through the system. Just get through the system. That's crazy. Just, just to get through it. I mean, to be honest. The, the, like I said, I didn't know what I was getting into mm-hmm. in general. I didn't understand. I didn't get it. I, I just presumed, well, I want to be a professional footballer. You go to the club, you get to play in the first team. That's it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I understood you have to train. I, I got that. I knew that. I knew, yeah. you know, as an apprentice, that you have to do the jobs. So I knew that bit. I was like, yeah, brilliant. But guess what? When do I play? Yeah. So at which point? So, you know, to me, it was like so. I do my two years, and then and then I get my and then I get my um, professional contract. Yeah. And, it, and and that was how I saw it. Mm-hmm. Probably two months in, I was like, "This is not really what <laughs> I thought was going to happen." Signed up for, and, you know, and it was, and believe me, you know, you know, I think it was there, there was myself. And a few others in, in our first years, and George Waller pulls up, pulls into the office, and just said, "Look, lads, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, it's not getting any better for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got two weeks, or I'm ripping up your, your YTS um, contracts, and you're going. 
Now, I looked at him and I thought, I don't know what you're on about because I've got, I said, well, for one, I've got nothing <laughs> to fall back on if you if you kick me out of this club. Uh, like I said, I, I was like, what is going on here? And, and again, like I said, you know, you know, you're not playing in the youth team. You know, you're training every day, you know, double sessions every day, you know, doing all your jobs, working late, you know, on nights, you know, back and forth, back and forth, you know, all these things you think to yourself, and I've got two weeks for you, or, or I'm out, and I'm thinking, what? And, and like I said, lucky enough, like, it, you know, you know, I did end up um, staying and, and getting a career out of it, but, you know, it can be taken away from you so easily. Yeah. Uh, well, you're the only one one bad injury away from it's done. It's yeah. Done. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, there's one lad um, he, that, that I, I, I met him, he was at Bure, and he had a real bad break. And he was on the rise, you know, going, mm. um, you know, you know, one the, you know, to go on and do and have, and have a really good career. And then, he, you know, he's, he's ended up playing non league. It, it, it finished by with 22. Wow. Yeah, 22 years old. I mean, I mean, obviously, insurance wise, obviously, um, you know, you know, helped the fact that he covered for a bit. But like he said, you know, he had to look for a job, you know, no idea about what looking for a job, um, you know, but that's he got, got himself sorted out and everything. Um, yeah. But again, like I said, you know, it does take its toll on you. It does take its toll on you and all that. And, um, and it is, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. it's, and, I, and I always say to anybody, if anyone's got any people who want to go down that route, I just encourage them one billion percent. Is that if they are not working in the classroom, <clears throat> making sure they've got that um, to fall so back on, you don't, you don't, you don't yeah. fall back on anything, that kind of stuff. That is the important thing. If if someone's really good, if the footballer is really good enough. Yeah, they'll be taken regardless. Yeah, you know, I, you know. I think there's so many children. We've, I mean, I think we know that way. Oh, Mister, oh, I'm at, uh, I'm on, I'm on, I'm at this club. Yeah. Oh, Mister, oh, I'm at this club now. Oh, Mister, oh, I'm at, this. and it's like, oh, hang on a minute, how many? You know, for me, that's a sign saying, well, clearly they just don't think you're good enough mm -hmm. because you, you're now on your eighth club. You know, professional clubs. You know, of his academies are. Yeah, you know, you know that that you know would. Possibly take a newborn baby straight from birth and and, and um, you know you know you know give them an eight week trial because you know <laughs> just, just, just in case they might find the next Messi or Ronaldo you know or whatever you know yeah. but <clears throat> you know you know to be to, to be truthful like, you know like it's you know I think it's down to the parents as well to be honest and just say look this is you know if you do want the child or you don't want the child and passing the child around to a different club and everything. Doesn't work. Yeah, it yeah. Doesn't work. You know what I mean? I just think, like I say, a child needs to go to be educated in, in football, but also they have to have that education prior to them leaving. They yeah. have to have the the, the the skills that even. I mean, <clears throat> I know we got to, we you know this over the college and um, within football clubs, um, but again for me, during that time, it might not be. I mean. We did a sport and leisure course um, at, um, over in Halifax College. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally would say, to, you know, even if they got there, pick a trade, find something, you know, make them use that time. Mm -hmm. Because um, if they don't get taken on, at least they have a skill to go into the real world. To the real world. Yeah. You know, because yeah. <laughs> I, I think I filled my first CV in. I was 28, 29. Wow. I'd, I'd, I'd never seen one before. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, I didn't have a clue. I'd never <laughs> been there. Right the offer to the business. Uh, well, I, gonna, I, gonna, I, I, did, I didn't know what I was doing. I not, I mean, look at people around, around me who, who could um, help me, you know, what I did to do when I was kind of, I just presume we just went to a, to a place you know, oh, I want to. I want to work with young children. You know, blah blah. And it was like, it don't work like that. I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So again, like I said, it's these little things that I think, like, you, you, you may as well just use them better in in a better way. But yeah, yeah. 
Um, three quick fire questions just to wrap up your playing career part. Um, yeah. You mentioned some managers there, boy. Who was the best manager you played under? Oh, best manager. Oh, uh, Alan, Alan, Alan Little. Yeah. When I was at York. Best player you've played with and against? Oh, Marcus Stewart. What a baller. Baller. Ronnie, Je Ren Ronnie Jepson, no? He was a baller too. Yeah, good friend Ronnie as well. But Marcus was a different striker. He was Marcus a bags was man. Bags man. Yeah, I mean, but he and he and he got a rough deal at town when he was when he had a he, he had he had, he had an injury on his. He kept breaking down, coming back, breaking down, coming back, breaking down, and fans gave him a, a tough time. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, in general and. They had no idea the work that like, he was doing, yeah. In, you know, to get himself just to play, you know, it was it was borderline hobbling before games would even start. You know, before games would even start, you know, just because of you know, again, with his price tag and you know, manager being under pressure and you know, and whatever. But mm -hmm. gosh, he he did a lot of work, a lot of work, and so I, I've got to probably put him, yeah. Put him up there. Does anyone stand out of who he played against? Oh, Definitely. gosh. Because in the championship, I was lucky to play against internationals and, you know, mm -hmm. more, more different countries and everything. I think when we played Fulham um, under Kevin Keegan, Chris Coleman and Kit Simons, Chris Coleman, Kit Simons, yeah. can't remember. Oh, yeah. Chris well, yeah, I mean, I mean, Chris Coleman's career ended early. Yeah, time, yeah. And obviously went to management and everything. And yeah. I mean, they, they, they were both um, Welsh internationals and everything. But I always knew from when playing at Huddersfield, um, you could see the physicality of player teams that have been in, in the, obviously the Premier League, obviously at the time, mm -hmm. just now. No, just dropping down that one division, but physically different level. Were, you know, you know. I mean, you're talking. That's a difference. I know we all criticise those on the, um, when watching match at day or whatever, or watching you know Super Sundays and all that, and everything, right? But that's the level. That's a, again another level of where these sort of players are actually at. So I'd, I'd probably go. I'd probably go with. I'd probably go with Chris Coleman because. I don't think he. I thought I was. I thought I was fast. <laughs> he, he actually laughed at me and went. The man said, "Where are you going?" <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he said to me, "Do you really want to go down this route?" And I just thought, <laughs> I, thought I thought, forget this. Absolutely <laughs> pointless. You know what I mean? I was. And but you know what? He wasn't smug with it. He wasn't smug with it. He wasn't disrespectful with it. You know, they were really professional mm -hmm. um, throughout. So. Yeah, but oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll go with them too. Um, and then just last one, best moment in your playing career? Sign of time. Yeah, it's just 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 like just signing. First of all, I was just finding out that I was going to be a, a trainee, mm -hmm. but then being told that you're getting. A professional contract for your home club, from your, from your hometown club. Yeah, I was. I, I, I'm very, like I said, it wasn't. It wasn't a, a guarantee. It was a. It was a tough journey for myself, mm -hmm. um, and I literally. And I, if we all know, if we all know, killing the bank. I've never made it that quick up killing the bank, <laughs> running across <laughs> out the raw pop school fields, mm -hmm. running down. Into my mum's house, and yeah. just literally breaking the news to her. Bear in mind, obviously, I had no mobile phone then. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, like these days, and just telling my parents that I'd been given a professional contract, 
to me, to me. That must be a mad feeling. Yeah, because like I said, it, it, it was just a moment where it's fi- it's finally happened. That's crazy. It finally happened. And I'll always remember the, the exact words that were given were, you, you put yourself in a position, you've got your potential contract, but now the work gets even harder. Mm-hmm. Which I, I kind of knew, I kind of knew in a way. So I was kind of like, yeah. But again, It's hard to do. I mean, it, it, it is another level. Yeah. And like you say, if you can get, and again, if you can get yourself physically, mentally, study the game, learn the game, you know, don't waste your time going out or worry about followers or whatever and anything. If you can have all that knowledge prior to even getting to that opportunity, to, to get those opportunities. Yeah. Make it, it makes it so much easier. So much easier. Because there are different levels, but yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely town. Definitely town. Brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's move on to your beloved Arsenal, who got right. a good point today. A good point against Burnley. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Not a good point? No, no. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make this quick. If if you were the manager, who are you signing? First signing, who are you signing right now? What do they need? Right. I, I, I mean, to be honest, I think I think you'd agree. Right now, attacking options. Right now, we are poor. Yeah. Attacking, you know. I understand as a squad, Arta as possibly trying to get a squad. Um, to work more rather than relying on just one person getting you 15, 20 goals a season. Yeah. But the problem is, is that we don't have those players even on the bench to take us to the next level. Yeah. You know, the Obama Yang, like just him falling off has just killed you, I think. I mean, I mean, listen, listen, listen. do you know what? Yes, it should have been um, more respectful to the history of Arsenal as a captain. Yeah, he should be setting no standards. You yeah. know, he should be the one. You know, again, I personally didn't think he should have been the captain at the time. Anyway, but when he did, when he was given the captain set, but mm-hmm. again, that was a time, that was a choice. Fine. Yeah, but there has to be at some point now where he's got to be brought back into the fold. Unless he wants to leave, he's yeah. a bit more open about that. He hasn't said it um, publicly, but if that's what's happening right now, because in all honesty, we are not, we cannot. I said, I cannot say to me right now that we our top goal scorer is, is Smith Rowe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our strikers are Bamyang and Lacazette mm-hmm. and Eddie and Ketia. It's not enough, is it? And Smith Rowe has got more goals th- 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 than them. Yeah. Put That's cool. That's pretty good. There is, there, is no, there is nothing today. Burnley are going on today saying great point 100% yeah, yeah. League, that is a great point of course yeah? but Burnley would also walk into, walk into that field looking at across at Arsenal and not seeing a threat not being intimidated mm. we, don't, we do not have a squad that where you can look you know when you're walking out the tunnel or yeah. lying up you know to the anthems or whatever yeah. and say oh wait hang on a minute we'll play this game yeah, you know, there's no one there. There's no one there's nothing. That fear factor has gone. I'm, yeah. I'm happy for the young players. I think yeah. um, Saka, brilliant. Smith Rowe, brilliant. Mm-hmm. I know he's gone on loan right now. Um, again, could for the camera, um, our midfielder, uh, Maitland Niles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, brilliant. New signing, um, uh, Tommy Asu. Tommy Asu, yeah. Tommy Asu, yeah. Again, Brilliant, Tim Keane, brilliant, fantastic, mm-hmm. yeah, fantastic to see um, the young um, kid coming through now. The system is all Charlie. Uh, is it for Timo? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Again, which they say again is another one coming for system. Do you know what? I do you know what? I would quite happily see every academy player or of a young person right now playing Arsenal, and I will not criticise. Yeah, because I'd, be, I'd be happier yeah. because. There is nothing right now that I can see 
that states, yes, mm. results are going well, but the actual fear factor, just don't see it. Yeah. You know, you know, we we are we are way way behind, way behind those top clubs. Way, I think the I top think three, my, the top three are way ahead of everyone. Out there. Oh, so with Man City, City, Clark, Chelsea, Liverpool, everyone else are just light years behind that, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and again, um, like it, it's about, and it's about investing. Into, <clears throat> it's about having that balance um, of investing the correct players mm -hmm. into the club. Um, yeah. And, and I think that that's gone wrong in the past. You yeah. know, I, I I do like Pepe as a player, but for seventy two million, you know, we could have got four players. Yeah, you know, it, you know, in all honesty, because we need more experienced. We need, you know, again, you know, you know, we you know we need that. Do you know what I mean, at the yeah. of the academy, but as experienced players yeah. that represent that represent the shirt. Yeah, you know who should represent the shirt and better. I think, I think, I think Arsenal and United are in the same boat. I don't think it's necessarily signing big players that are going to do it. It's about signing the right characters. Yeah, so like you need people who are up for the fight. That's that's just what United and Arsenal are at. That's where they're at at the moment. They need players who are up for a fight to try and get them back to where they need to be. Do you know what I mean? Um, well, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I mean your number seven shirt represents something. I want them to represent the shirt represent, represent somewhere. I think I think I, I I think our number seven will always mm -hmm. be David Rowcastle. Yeah. Because he embodied everything about Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. And I was lucky to meet him once. Um, um mm. yeah, um we were in um we were abroad somewhere, I can't remember so, so look like, you know, it was like Chelsea at the time, but you know, you know, listening to him talking, I was like, Oh my gosh. You know, David Rowcastle. You know, it's you know this is he. He embodied everything about when he put that shirt on. Yeah. And Arsenal's and Arsenal and every designer Arsenal should um, again. I'll throw it out there to or to the kit makers. I'm more than willing to, to, to be part of the process. If you, if you know, I don't mind a bit of um, <laughs> you know, sponsorship in that way. That'd be brilliant. But yeah. you know, our numbers. You know, every Arsenal shirt should have David Rowcastle. You know, yeah. because and they need to watch videos, learn about this. And I'm talking um, Man United as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I, watched, yeah. I watched, I watched, I watched, I listened to an uh, interview um, Patrice Evra, mm -hmm. and he got DVDs, he yeah. got books, he got information about Man United. Yeah, yeah. To why, why it was important. Yeah, and he said he had to do his bit to leave the door open for the next person coming in to, to, to you know to do mm. the exact same thing and I yeah. think that I mean, and I think that's that's what it is yeah yeah I think that's what it is you've got to respect the club and yeah. who you're playing for and I'm not saying that players don't you know again I say you know judging all that way but again I think first and foremost and if that doesn't hit home to you then don't sign for the club you know, you know if, if you if you can't embody, I mean, if you remember, if, if I remember correctly, the tradition at Arsenal was the captain made decided what shirt you wore, long sleeve or short sleeve, yeah, and everybody wore the same. And I can't remember the kit man at um, Arsenal um, came back to me. Well, the, the story came out that somebody went out with a long sleeve because they said they were cold, but what the captain, honestly. And you know it, it was kicked off. But again, to me, to me, it's things like that. Though for me, yeah, if it's in place, you've got to respect it. Yeah, 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 definitely. You have to respect the values of of, of, of what that club means. Yeah, um, and 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 take and take it, keep it moving forward. You know, that's the whole point. You know, so yeah. You know, <clears throat> but again, I say it's a bit. I mean, obviously. Um, at the at, even at Huddersfield Town at the moment, obviously, they took away the development for the children, you know, for the for the kids prior to um, yeah. apprenticeship and everything. And again, I mean, if that wasn't around when I was um, going up and everything, I, I, I'd have no, you know, I wouldn't be. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. it yeah. Football and 
you know, and that is scary. Bonkers, isn't it? You know, but it's that, you know when I when when I when I when I heard that, um, that did worry me of, you know, the young child in, you know, in less developed areas that couldn't, you know, who may who may be good enough, but won't be seen in his local town. Yeah, you know, or, or, you know, you know, given that opportunity to put on the blue and white shirt mm -hmm. and walk out, you know. You know, to, you know, to to to, 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 you know, to, to wonderful fans. Yeah. You know, that's that 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 does worry me. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Um, who's your favourite Arsenal player ever? Ever. Mm. Well. <sighs> well, I think we all know. I, I, uh, I always try to model myself on Ian Wright when I play. I knew you were gonna say, you know. So 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 right it right it was always my boy. It yeah, all, it was always it was always a boy. You know what though, right? It's one of them. You, like it's impossible not to like Ian Wright. There can't be a person no. who doesn't like Ian Wright, can't there? No, I mean to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I, you know, I think I got borderline crush more with Ian Wright. I, I probably say I, 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 I really like him. anything, anything. You know, it did make a difference. Anything he said, yeah, agree with it. No, don't care. Ian Wright said it. It's right. It would make a difference, and. When they we played a game, town played a game I guess Arsenal in the League Cup. Mm -hmm. um, Neil Warnock was the manager at the time, and Arsenal obviously came early, set up and everything. And obviously, I was lurking around the area, and obviously I went to the changing rooms, stroked his shirt a few times, and I thought, in right shirt, I thought, I thought, <laughs> shirt, I thought, I thought well, obviously I can't take the shirt because obviously. I'm <laughs> you know, yeah. everybody would know it. it would be me. So I was like, right, just gotta, just gotta, just go with it. But you know, I just thought they again, like I said, at the time, Tony Adams, Martin Keown, mm. um, Paul Merson, you know, all these players. When these guys come out, I mean, I, you know, you know, I love coming out and everything, and these. Oh, these specimens of just, I was like, what on earth is going on here? Yeah. You know, but I just remember, like I said, he scored possibly one of the best hat tricks I've ever seen. I've mm -hmm. ever seen, you know, um, that day. And I just remember just sat with all the players, wives, the fans, you know, at the old ground, all these road, and just clapping every goal, cheering <laughs> for every goal. And everyone was like, Rodney, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm an Arsenal fan. So what 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 else am I going to do? Yeah. I mean, I can't do that. I can, and I did. <laughs> I mean, so I just, and like I say, I just remember getting a photo at the end with um, Kevin Campbell and um, Ian Wright. Um, didn't have a camera at the time. Yeah. Didn't even like I say yeah, and look at like I say um, um, Simon Collins is mum and dad. Um, Simon Collins was the next player. Um, mm -hmm. They were double there and took one for me and gave me four. So I was pretty really proud. But then on the, on the ret but on the return leg. Um, Neil Warnock um, took me down to the to the to the return leg. Obviously, I was training, so I wasn't part of the squad. Mm -hmm. um, um, got told that I needed I needed to get back um, back to the club within fifteen minutes because that's when they were leaving. So I had to get I had to get home and back in my tracks and everything and get back. Yeah. And I was like, "Well, is someone going to drive me home?" I'm like, "No, you'd have to go yourself." I never run. Never ran so quick in my life. Yeah. Never, never, ever in my life I ran so quick, and I and I got back in time, and no. and th th there was rumours about me being on bench, and I was like, I was like, I said, I don't think I'll be on bench. I said, I doubt that. Like you know, shipping, you know. I'm thinking, I, I don't think I'm. Mean, you know, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm I'm experiencing just the fact that I'm just going down, and I yeah. just want to see the, the Arsenal thing. And I'm telling you now, darling, it it, it it was. I've never been to Buckingham Palace, but. That's what it felt like. Yeah, walking yeah, into, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just walking into those halls, I just savoured every single minute of it. Walking into the changing rooms, you know, going onto the pitch, you know, you know, again, didn't even know if I was involved or not. Didn't, to be honest, I didn't even care. I did not even care. Um, I wasn't. I, I was just happy just to be part, just to be there. Yeah. Just, uh, just see that, that, you know, and. Again, like I say, knowing the different levels. I mean, obviously, I, I wasn't. Um, I think we ended up doing one-one in that game. I think 
They mm-hmm. rested quite a lot of players with the playing one one, but played really, it worked, did really well, worked really hard, you know, every single player that night. And then obviously um a nice free bat at the end um of the game. Because bear in mind I had no money, you know. Didn't realize it was a free bat until ten minutes in. <laughs> you know. And I was, I'm sat there like just having a conversation there, and just seeing Paul Mason about 30 beers on his table with his mates. <laughs> you know, and I was like, I, you know, he, he gave me a nod and all that. And I thought, my gosh, Paul Mason just winked at me. I'm like, going, like, yeah, was, like really? so yeah, so yeah. I mean, let's like say, yeah, Ian Wright, be, uh, Ian, Wright, Ian, Wright, Ian Wright, definitely. I mean, Great I don't mean Ian Wright, but Ian, Ian Wright, 100% Ian Wright. Great choice. Um, Rods, I'm going to wrap it up, man, because. Like, obviously, like I said to you beforehand, I want this podcast to be about um, showcasing people. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of friends who are doing a lot of good things, man, so it's about yeah. um, sharing it with people. Do you know what I mean? So, like, the charity work that you've done, some people might not know about that, so it's highlighting stuff, man, and giving people the flowers. Um, but, bro, if you'd, have, if you'd have told, I think I was about, what, six, seven? I remember coming, I remember coming to a town game and you scored. I'm sure you did. I think it was against Charlton. Yeah. Did you score in that game? I, did, Lee Boyer was was. I think I was there and I'm looking at it, but if you'd have told me at six, seven year old, whatever I was then, that one of my best mates was going to be Rodney Raw, I'd have laughed, yeah. honestly. So just like coming round to your house for a drink. Yeah. Uh, pff, you, your family are amazing. Your mum cooking on multiple occasions to prevent <laughs> that I've done. The best food, by the way. Yeah. Um, but do you know what I mean? Golf, hustling me at golf. You're a bandit in golf. I think you've played more than me now, though, Darren. Yeah, you've played you're more than me now, golf. You're all like oh, one of them. Like, yeah, you, yeah I, just, I just play now and again, and then all of a sudden he just drives it straight down fair. <laughs> so it's kind of people playing here. No, I do like yeah, playing but... golf for you, to be fair, because it's light-hearted, and that's what I need. Someone yes. who's not bothered about going around slow and getting no. lots of steps in, it's fine. No. Do you know what I mean? So perfect. Um, I'm going to wrap up every episode I do with this with the same three questions. So my first yeah. one, is if you could invite three celebrities to dinner, who would it be and what are you having? Well, I, well for, for a definite, we're having um, my mum's special yeah. mixture of um, goat meat, fried chicken, boiled chicken, rice and peas, mac cheese. Stop it now. A rote. Stop I, it. I would, it, it, it'd, be a, it'd be a banquet of Jeez. everything, what you know, of what my mum and her sisters, you know, went catering for people's parties and stuff, and yeah. how blessed we are the fact that they, um, as you well know, um, oh, what know. they do for you. Um, so yeah, so that would be our meal. Um, I would invite Malcolm X. Boy. <laughs> Nelson Mandela mm. and now I was going to say Muhammad Ali mm. but obviously with having Malcolm X there um, I, I think he might they might I think I'd be, I'd be ignored <laughs> Muhammad Ali would um, engage Malcolm X too much and get me out of the conversation so I'm going to leave as much as I admire Muhammad Ali I would um, be moving from the conversation, yeah. and I would go also with my final one, which would be Lewis Hamilton. Oh no, no, if I know, is it Maya Maya Angelou? Yeah, Maya Angelou. Yeah, um, uh, and I say for those three people is that I would want the knowledge that they have. I'm gonna say, boy, that's some insight there at that table. I would, I would want to. I would, I would love to listen and very knowledgeable people mm. and to gain, to gain their knowledge would be to me enough. Yeah. I would take that. Yeah. I would take that, I, you know, to, you know, from what, you know, again, like I say, what, what they were to how, you know, you know, to see how that balance, you know, what, you know, and see if I could uh, maybe use what they what they know yeah. and give and give it back to others. Yeah. yeah. 
That'd be um, cool. Question two. What's your one Netflix recommendation for listeners? Well, I'm currently watching Cobra Kai. Is it good, yeah? I ain't what's that, you? you know what, to, to be honest, it's actually kind of funny, actually. I actually didn't... I didn't see the sense in it. But then my son, Tyler, obviously said I need to watch it. So mm-hmm. I'm currently watching that at the moment. And it is, it, it, it's, it's like hard fun. It, it is kind of kind of cool. But, is it one for the kids? Can I watch it with the kids? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It is. Um, I might have a look. Okay, there's, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay material, but it, but it is. I gotta like say, there's, there's a few little minor little ways, but there's nothing too major, you know. In fact, no, um, don't watch it by yourself, Darren. By yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be held responsible. No, I'm not. I'm not having, I am not having your missus coming after me and all that. Saying, <laughs> what are you playing at? Absolutely not. You uh, watch it by yourself, lad. Watch it by yourself. <laughs> um, but um, my. The, yeah, the new series is just coming out mm-hmm. is Ozark, isn't it? Oh, big. Yeah, I mean... It's a that, and, bit that's big. Yeah, I mean, that in itself, Ozark has to be... <laughs> I did not... From the first episode, and again, my son Tyler, and he, he asked to, to watch it, Mm-hmm. Five ten minutes in, I was like, I, I have no idea why he's making me watch this because I'm, I'm not, I have no interest whatsoever. But I can only say, what an unbelievable, yeah, series. I, I think we, I, if you haven't watched Ozark, then you are, you need to give yourself a shake yeah. because that has to be up there with one of the best ever. Has to be ever. Has to ever. Be. Ever, with with Stranger Things, a close second. Yeah, a very really close, close second. Stranger Things is a very close second, which I yeah. do try. I do watch, um, quite often an episode now and then, just in case the see the new series pops out very soon. So yeah, you can't really not. You know what I mean? Yeah, new season too soon. Yeah, too. yeah. I think it's important to kind of make sure you understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know that that background, but yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Mind you, though, I don't want a good one. It was a money heist, big, yeah, very, very good series. Great yeah, way. Once you get past, once you get past the um the audio, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> the audio yeah. Once you get past that, because I I remember putting it on. And then turn it off thinking, I can't watch that. If it's not the actual voice, I can't watch it. <laughs> yeah. But then I just stuck with it one night and I was like, oh my God, honestly, I think I watched the whole series in brilliant. one day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It really is well worth a watch as well. Money Eyes is really good, really good. Yeah. Uh, last question. If you could give yeah. one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? You do know I'm not old, don't you? I'm older than you, but I'm not so old. You, I said younger. I said younger. <laughs> <laughs> how, how young would you? How young would you say? Um, what age would you say younger? Say, you uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Ooh. I think that's the time where you you think you know better than everyone in it. It's about that time. Yeah. Yeah. Get back to what you love doing most, which was mm-hmm. going to school and actually being one of the best students there. Not just the best at sports, but the person that actually knew mm-hmm. that, you know, they, that, that was in set one for maths and English. And, yeah. you know, um, I couldn't. I couldn't see how much harm I was doing with my education. I just could not. I could. I just couldn't see it. Couldn't. Couldn't see it. Um, both my PE teachers, Mister S- well, Scary, and oh, what is it from my other PE teacher. Again, a lot of respect um, to both of them, and they spoke to me constantly. And I did. It. I knew the, what they were trying to do, but I couldn't get myself out of that. All I wanted to do was be a professional footballer. Yeah. And I literally 
did not care about my education. I didn't. I just didn't care. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I, I think I probably, if I could have done, I could have literally put my name on, on the on the test paper and walked out quite happily. Mm. Not because, of, but I knew obviously from a different point of view. I know my, my parents would have been disappointed. I don't think it had gone down well for me. For me personally, I don't think I'd have been here to have that conversation if I did that. But that's just how I felt, and I always look back at that, and I always hate myself for, for that. I hate myself for not making sure that I gave, because I said the teachers were there, are there giving you the help, giving you the advice mm -hmm. to help you um, get those results that you need. And I was capable of, and I was more than capable, way capable, but I just kept sliding and sliding and it was too late by then. It was, you know, it was too late by then. So I would quite happily love to go back at that room, get yeah. the grades that I know I should have got yeah. um, and put myself in a better position, like I say, to... If football had dealt me the other way, I was in a better position to get on with my um, next stage of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. With the knowledge and, and the um, grace to prove it. So, yeah, definitely in school. Definitely. Rod's been absolutely fantastic speaking to you. It has. Um, honestly, I was... I'm, I'm, you can there's a few people that I had ideas on having on first yeah because I, I needed it to be the right person um, yeah but tonight has just proved that I, this was the best decision this was the best decision man so I appreciate it appreciate your time no um, keep being you man because boy if people don't know now after that <laughs> top man no, honestly top, yeah. top 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 man no so, I really appreciate anything and I know you, you say you, you're Marco, obviously, do, you know. Two we'll try and get you on there as well, man. You, you, you know, you know, yeah, try and to do some, something something positive, as yeah. you always do. I know you're both my United fans, which, again, I really don't understand why you want to put yourself <laughs> through that. But I know that your intentions um, are always good. I know that the fact that I hope that this, you know, does help both of you and that... Um, Anybody out there that can help, you know, you know yourselves and all that would be a, you know, they won't be disappointed. You know, we so. can, let's end it there, man. Before my head gets yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> if I admit, no problems. Rodney Rowe, okay. thank you very much, man. We'll wrap it up. No problems. You take Back care, mate. Take care. Take care, mate. <laughs>